The carnival was in town and Dan Klein was going solo. His best friend Mike Nelson had a date with Candy Delaney. Candy had intended on her sister Shannon being Dan's date, but Shannon declined at the last minute and found her own for that night. Dan was disappointed in that. He had a crush on Shannon, knowing her for most of his life. They all went to the same schools, but Shannon was always two grades ahead. She was very cute and had a fantastic personality. She was her grades at girl or alpha girl. She was a stereotype walking. A blonde, curvy cheerleader who didn't act like she was as popular or as beautiful as she was. Dan, Mike, and Candy had just graduated from high school and were in the final stages of getting ready for college. Candy was going to Northern Illinois in DeKalb and Dan and Mike were going to University of Illinois at Chicago. They lived in the northwest suburbs of Chicago and USC was commuting distance. NIU was a bit farther and Candy was staying on campus. Shannon was already in college at NIU. She was two years older than Candy. At the carnival, Dan was keeping an eye out for an opportunity to break away from Mike and Candy. He didn't want to be a fifth wheel and felt uncomfortable. He couldn't foresee that he was about to get his chance. They were in line for ride tickets when Dan saw Shannon running with Steve Rouse chasing her. Dan yelled Simon to Mike as he chased after them. They ended up behind a tent and were out of the public view. By the time he caught up to them, Shannon was on the ground holding her ankle in tears. Steve was hunched over yelling at her when Dan grabbed him and pulled him back, causing her attacker to fall. Steve got up and threw a punch at Dan that connected square on his nose. With his nose bleeding, Dan looked around and saw he was on his own. Mike didn't follow along when he gave chase. Steve and Dan were about the same size, but Steve was more muscular and a few years older. Dan threw a punch that missed his opponent's face and threw himself off balance. Steve pushed the falling Dan into the muddy ground and followed that with a kick to his kidney. At that moment, luckily for Dan, a cop on a golf cart passed by causing Steve to run off. Shannon crawled over to him and checked to see how badly he was hurt. She saw that he had a bloody lip and nose, but it didn't look broken. Did I win, Dan asked with a smile sitting up in the mud. No, I'd call it a draw, Shannon said. How's your ankle? I think it's broken. I can't put any weight on it, Dan got up and looked around. He saw they were near the medical tent and he said, Simon, I'll help you to the med tent, okay. He pulled her up and as she tried to lean on him, she almost fell. He said, we'll do it the easy way and picked her up. He walked the hundred or so yards to the medical tent carrying her easily. There was a cop in there dealing with a drunk and an EMT waiting for something to do. What happened to you two, the officer asked. Dan recognized him. It was a friend of his parents, Frank Brady. The EMT helped her on the table and checked out her ankle as Dan and the police officer talked. Mr. Brady, she was attacked by her date and hurt her ankle running from him. I tried to be Mr. White Knight and help her, but was lucky that he ran off what started it, the officer asked Shannon. He got mad that I wouldn't she paused not wanting to say the words. It's okay. I need to know he told her. I wouldn't give him a smooch on the Ferris wheel. He'd been drinking, and he's mean drunk. When we got off the ride, he dragged me away and told me that I was going to do it willingly or forcefully. There was no way I was going to, so I smacked him and ran off. I fell behind the tents. And that's when Dan showed up out of nowhere as Steve was screaming at me. I thought he was going to hit me, so did I. I pulled him back, and he attacked me. He punched me, then pushed me down and kicked me when my return punch missed. Dan added, Who's the guy, Steve Rouse, she said. Okay, because you're hurt, I have to file a report. You'll both need to give a statement. How bad is it, Johnny? I don't think it's broken. But she'll still need an x-ray. There's a lot of swelling, so we need to ice it first. Okay. Check out Lancelot and make sure his nose ain't busted Shannon was taken to the hospital by ambulance as Dan was getting checked out. He texted Candy to come to the med tent so he could tell her what happened and so she could call her parents. He was walking out of the tent when Mike and Candy approached from the parking lot. What happened, Candy asked. Your sister was trying to get away from her date and I got involved. Long story short, she's on her way to the hospital with a hurt ankle and her mean date took off running. Jesus, Mike said. Austin, yeah, I mean. I told you to come when I ran after her. What the heck happened? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry, yeah, well, I'm no worse for the wear. I got lucky, though. 
he was about to stomp the crud out of me. I have to go to the hospital. My folks are going to meet me there. Can you drive me, Candy asked after ending her call. Yeah, of course, Mike answered and held her hand as they walked to his car. I'll see you guys later, Dan said as he walked away. A couple of weeks later, Dan and Mike were hanging out by Dan's pool when Dan asked, How are things with Candy? Oh, there's nothing there. We went out a few times, but we didn't really click as a couple. Gotcha. Well, she's going to be leaving for school soon anyway. Yeah, her dad rented an apartment out there for her and Shannon to live in. They may even have gone already, Odd Dan said regretfully. He never had a chance to see how Shannon was doing. Since Steve didn't hit her, he got off with a slap on the wrist for the fight with Dan. Steve was going to Alabama for school and went back early. Dan was glad he didn't want a rematch. The school year moved along uneventfully, and at Christmas break, Dan bumped into Candy at the mall. Hey Candy, how are you good? Just getting some last-minute gifts. How about you the same? How school challenging but good? Shannon helps a lot. We are both accounting majors, so she can help if I need it with my classes since she's already taken them. That's good. How's she doing? How's the ankle? Oh, fine. It's healed up. Is she in town? He asked hopefully. No. She reconnected with a guy she dated at school and went home with him for break. Oh, Dan said sadly, and Candy noticed. Dan, you want to grab some lunch? Yeah, sure. How about Maggiano? Sounds good. I'll drive you like my sister, huh, Candy said as they were waiting for a table. I guess he answered sheepishly. She's older than us. You don't have a chance with her, you know I never really considered that a possibility. Anyway, I'm here with you, not her, she smiled when he said that. Dan continued, when do you go back? The seventh. Classes don't start for a bit, but I'd like to be settled back in shore, Makes sense you know it's only a bit over an hour's drive from here Dan was curious at that unsolicited comment from her. Was she interested in him and saying it wasn't too far to date during the school year? Yeah, do you come home on weekends at all I would, if I had a reason to she said with a smile as their buzzer went off telling them their table was ready. They had a great time throughout the meal, having easy conversations with no awkwardness. Dan was getting smitten with her, and he could tell she was being very flirty with him. Dan insisted on paying for lunch, and as he was settling up, he asked her, would you like to see a movie tomorrow night? She considered for a moment and said, I've got a date with Mike, I'm sorry, it's more for just something to do. We didn't really click when we dated over the summer, I'll cancel and we can go no, don't do that. We can do it another time, he said. He didn't want to get into a complicated situation with his friend and Candy. He figured that he needed to talk to Mike because there has to be some kind of interest if he's going out with her again. As she dropped him at his car, he said goodbye and got a hug. She said, please call me, Dan. I'd like to see you again, sure. See you around, dude. You're going out with Candy again, Dan said to his friend. Yeah, she's gorgeous, duh, but you said you guys didn't click. We don't have to click if I can get closer to her. I almost did last time, but my parents came home and interrupted us. After that, she went to school. How'd you find that out anyway? I ran into her at the mall. We had lunch, and I asked her out for tomorrow. She said she was seeing you. I didn't know you were interested. It's just the one date. You can have your shot at her after. I'm not falling in love or anything. Yeah, whatever. Just a short fling, huh? Hey man, if she's ready and willing, I'm able Dan went to a movie with his younger sister Angie and a couple of her friends. While waiting for the show to start, he noticed that Mike and Candy were two rows in front of them. Angie playfully asked Dan if he liked Candy, since he seemed sad and was looking at Mike's date. Dan admitted to having feelings for her, but explained that she already had a date with Mike. Angie teased him by pointing out that Candy seemed interested in him too. During the movie, Mike and Candy were so focused on each other that they didn't pay attention to what was happening on screen. When the movie ended and they were leaving, Candy noticed that Dan was looking at her. She felt embarrassed and didn't say anything, but Mike gave Dan a thumbs up to show that he had won her over. Angie tried to cheer up Dan by pointing out that he had an advantage over Mike because he was with three attractive girls while Mike only had Candy as his date. Dan laughed and clarified that he wasn't interested in a group activity with younger girls. Everyone chuckled as they walked out of the theater. After their break, Dan refrained from calling Candy. He didn't want to interfere with her relationship with Mike especially when Mike told him that they had been together 
and would continue seeing each other. On the day Candy was returning to school, she called Dan. Dan, why haven't you called me, she asked. Well, you lied to me about your true feelings for Mike, Dan replied. I didn't lie, Candy protested. Your actions at the movie made it seem like you did. Mike even told me about what happened after the movie and how things progressed between you two. That jerk told you all that yes. He warned me about pursuing you and I appreciate that, especially after knowing that you spent your entire break with him, despite not being interested in him, Dan. It's not what you think. I really like you. Can we please go out sometime? No, I don't think so. I liked you too. But it seems like you either lied about your feelings for Mike or you moved too fast for me. Are you calling me a bad person? Not at all. It's just that I'm not interested in a casual relationship. I want something more serious. Candy held back a tear and decided to end the call without saying anything. Dan regretted their conversation, as he knew he shouldn't have been so harsh, but her actions had bothered him. The next day, he received a text from an unknown number, my sister is an idiot, Lancelot. Knowing it was Shannon, he responded, no, she's just the wrong sister. Immediately after sending the message, Dan regretted it. He didn't want Shannon to know about his feelings while she was dating someone else. Shannon responded with a frowning emoji. Dan and Mike were having lunch at the mall one day during spring break when Shannon and Candy approached them. Before Mike could react, Candy slapped him so hard that she thought she had broken her hand. You lying jerk. How could you tell Dan that I did those things with you? You knew he liked me. You even lied to him about seeing me during break. We only went on one date. Candy furiously exclaimed. Dan was shocked by the revelation. He looked at Mike, who remained silent. Mike Dan finally spoke. Hey, I just wanted a fair chance with her. I knew you wouldn't go after her if you thought she was easy. I told you those things to give myself a chance before you got together with her, Mike admitted. Dude, you're supposed to be my best friend. Why would you do that to me? I'm just following the bro code, man. Bros before girls. I figured you would find someone else. It's not like she's going to marry either of us. You're a terrible person, Candy said, leaving them both behind. Shannon nodded in agreement and said, Dan, call her. You still have a chance. She really likes you. It's all she talks about at school. Okay. But dude, I need some time away from you right now. I'm really angry, Dan said as he stood up and left. Mike shook his head in disbelief. Dan called Candy multiple times over the next few weeks, but she never returned his calls. One Saturday morning, he decided to drive out to DeKalb to see her. What's your address? Dan texted Shannon. I want to send Candy some flowers, Aw, W. I hope that works, Shannon replied, sending him the address. Finding her apartment was easy, and he saw her car parked outside. He had picked up flowers and a stuffed animal, hoping to make amends. Candy, surprised by the doorbell, asked, who could that be Shannon, guessing it was the flowers, said, it's probably for you. Candy opened the door and saw Dan standing there with flowers. Dan. What are you doing here, Shannon smiled and said. I'll leave you two alone, Dan asked if he could come in, and Candy led him to the kitchen. As she continued making her salad, Dan began, Candy, why haven't you returned my calls? Even if it's just to tell me to go away. I don't know. I'm upset about what you said to me calling me inappropriate names when I didn't do those things. I was too harsh, and I apologize. I didn't mean to imply anything negative about you. I just meant that I'm not interested in a casual relationship. If we date, I want it to be something more serious. It's frustrating, because I genuinely thought we had a connection, so did I. And that's why I'm trying again, Candy laughed and said, I guess I can't even confide in my own sister, Dan asked. Can we go to the movies on Friday? I'd really like to take you out, Candy agreed, saying, okay, you win. But are you sure you want a long-distance relationship? It's only an hour's drive, and I believe you're worth it before Candy could respond. Shannon walked in and commented, so you two are finally getting together. Yeah, thanks for telling him not to give up, Candy said playfully. Dan and Candy started dating, and everything progressed normally for a few months. They spent most days together during summer break when they weren't working. On a particular Friday... They had planned to go to see a movie, and Candy insisted on driving. Dan realized they were going in the opposite direction of the theater and asked about their destination. We're going to watch a movie, Candy replied. At your apartment, Dan asked curiously. 
Yes, because my sister is at our parents' house, and I feel like it's time to take our relationship to the next level Dan smiled and said, I like your way of thinking. There was no need for pretenses when they entered Candy's apartment. They walked straight to her bedroom. They hugged and comforted each other for several minutes. They didn't need to rush or push any boundaries. They knew they wanted to be together. They had a great time together. I love you, Candy, I love you too, life continued for the next couple of years. They dated and eventually got engaged, planning to get married after graduation. Shannon married her boyfriend the summer before Dan and Candy's senior year. They settled in the same town they all grew up in. Dan and Mike remained best friends. There was a bit of tension after the argument, but they got over it. Candy even warmed up to him after a while, which surprised Dan. Mike would be Dan's best man in the wedding. A week after graduation, Dan and Candy moved in together. They both had jobs in their hometown and settled in an apartment about a mile from Shannon and her husband Aaron. On a boring Tuesday night, their doorbell rang. Dan pressed the intercom. Who is it? It's Shannon. Please, I need your help without hesitation. He rushed out of the apartment and down the stairs. Shannon, oh my goodness, he said as he opened the door and saw her with a bleeding lip and swollen cheek, clutching her left arm. She collapsed into his arms and sobbed uncontrollably. Candy came up and embraced her. What happened? Sis, I caught him cheating and tried to kick him out. He just laughed at me, so I started hitting him in the chest. He retaliated and pushed me, but I lost my balance and fell down the stairs. Candy held her for a few minutes before saying, We need to take you to the emergency room. Your arm looks broken. It's not his fault. I was hitting him okay. We can deal with that later. Dan, please get the car. Dan? Where is he? He was just here a moment ago, Shannon said tearfully. Oh no. He better not be going to your house, Lancelot. No, Shannon whispered to herself, while Candy said, Wait here. I'll grab my keys. I'm going to knock that guy out, Dan muttered as he quickly drove to Shannon's house. He arrived and without hesitation, opened the unlocked door and entered. Great, you came back, a voice shouted from upstairs. Dan silently climbed the stairs, hoping to surprise Aaron, but luck was not on his side. Oh, it's you. What do you want? Did your little princess come to your doorstep with false accusations? She fell. I didn't hit her not uttering a word. Dan walked into the bedroom and punched Aaron with all his strength. In a movie, Aaron would have been knocked out, but reality proved otherwise. Aaron fell onto the bed and swiftly got up to tackle Dan. The two wrestled around the room, exchanging blows, until Dan knocked the wind out of Aaron with a powerful strike to the stomach. Standing up, Dan kicked him in the back, remembering how that had immobilized him in his altercation with Steve. Ironically, he thought, realizing that all his fights were because of Shannon, Candy rushed into the room and screamed at Dan to stop. Dan, shocked to see his wife, turned to find her in tears. He's not worth it. Don't get yourself into trouble because of him, she said. Leave us alone, you. You weren't saying that I wasn't worth it when we were together last night, Aaron snarled. No, she screamed. He's lying, baby. Don't believe him, oh yeah. Look for yourself, man, Aaron said as he handed Dan his phone. Candy tried to grab the phone, but Dan, in a state of shock, managed to keep it away from her. She fell to the floor, weeping and repeatedly saying, No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Shannon entered the room and asked, what's happening? Still clutching her injured arm. Let's get you to the emergency room. We can discuss this on the way, Dan said. No, baby, don't go. Wait, Candy cried. Ignoring her, Dan helped Shannon out of the house. Dan, please tell me what happened in there, Shannon said. Your husband told me he was involved with Candy last night. I was working late and went out for some drinks, so I don't know if she was home or not. I found clothes under the bed that weren't mine tonight. That's how I caught him. I don't know if they belong to her or not. I was at mom and dad's. He gave me his phone and said there's proof on there. I haven't looked yet. I'm afraid of what I might find. What if it's true, he said, his voice trembling with tears. I love her so much, Dan. The pair of clothes I found was red. She has some like that. Let's wait until after we get you taken care of. We can look at the phone together then okay Dan held the phone in his hand, waiting for an update on Shannon's condition. He tried to unlock the phone, 
but it was passcode protected. A nurse approached him and called his name. You can come back now, she said. As he stood up, he saw Candy running towards the entrance. He shook his head and followed the nurse. Well, you look like you lost a fight, Dan said to Shannon as he approached her bed. How many steps did your face bounce off of, he joked, causing her to giggle slightly. Her arm was in a sling and her face had some bruising. They said it's broken. I'll be getting an x-ray tonight and a cast tomorrow, I guess. Did you look at the phone? I just can't believe she would do this. He must be lying, it's passcode protected. I couldn't access it. Try 117,711, he attempted to unlock the phone. I mean, he went to the messages app and searched for recent texts. He found a chain with the initial CD, assuming it was candy, and opened it. There were only four messages, making him believe Aaron deleted them regularly. CD, he won't be home after work. Aaron, she went to your parents' CD, I'm leaving now. Be ready, Aaron, I'm always ready for fun times. Tears began to fall as he read the line your parents it could only refer to candy. He tapped on the CD icon to view the contact information. It turned out to be Candy's number. He handed the phone to Shannon and sat down, lost in thought. Shannon started scrolling through the photo gallery and discovered several videos of Aaron engaging in activities. It appeared to involve two different women, one of whom was definitely Candy. Oh gosh, there's a video, she said, sending it to herself and Dan. There are four of them, but only one includes Candy. I don't recognize the other woman tears streaming down her face, she exclaimed. How could she do this to us? my own sister, my husband. I don't know. I'm sorry, Shannon. I never suspected a thing. This is such a shock to me. She gave me no reason to believe she was cheating on me if it was only once. Could you forgive her honestly? If it was anyone other than your husband, maybe. The betrayal towards you is unforgivable. Shannon placed the phone down and reached out for Dan's hand. I love you, Lancelot. I love you too. But why did you call me Lancelot? Remember that time when you came after me when Steve was chasing me, he nodded. In the tent, the police officer called you Lancelot when you said you were my protector. You always seem to be there for me when I need you. You're my knight in shining armor, my Lancelot. Laughing, Dan said. I had forgotten about that. Well, Lady Guinevere, should I call your parents? Yes, I'll have to stay with them once I'm released from here, all right. I'll make the call as he made the call. The police arrived to speak with Shannon. The hospital had a policy of involving the police if there were suspicions of spousal or child abuse. It was up to the patient whether they wanted to cooperate with them. Dan walked out to the lobby to make the call. He managed to position himself in a spot where Candy couldn't see him, but he could see her if he looked around the corner. She was sitting alone in a corner, crying and watching the main entrance to the ER. He still couldn't believe she had done this to him, to her own sister. The shock was gradually being replaced by anger. He called Candy's parents and said, Hi, it's Dan. Hi, Dan. What's going on? Shannon had a fight with Aaron and is in the ER what her father shouted. Is she all right? She fell down the stairs after he pushed her. She's pretty beat up and has a broken arm. Her room is 112A in the ER. I'm going to kill that jerk I managed to get a few hits in when I saw him. Listen, it's even worse than that. How can it be worse he was having an affair with Candy what? My Candy, yes. The jerk recorded videos and showed me. Dear Lord, where is she? She's in the ER waiting room. They were advised not to let her in all right. We're on our way. Okay, I'll stay with Shannon until you arrive. Right now she's talking to the police. I'm not sure if she'll press charges or not. Before she knew it was Candy, she said it wasn't his fault. But now that she knows, she might take it out on him and pursue charges. Honestly, I think he deserves to be thrown in jail, I agree, Dan. See you soon, Dan passed the police on his way back to the room. They stopped him and asked if he knew or saw anything. He told them no, and they walked on. He didn't want them to know about his fight with Aaron. Hey, your parents are on their way. Are you okay? Yeah. They will be here soon to take me to x-ray how to go with the police. I told them everything. That he pushed me away to stop me from hitting him and I fell. They are going to arrest him good. He was way too smug about all of this, how could I have been so wrong about him, Dan? Don't stress about that I'm going to divorce him good. You deserve better, she didn't reply, and gave him a fake smile. As the orderly took her out, Dan walked back into the waiting area. Peeking around the corner, he saw Candy and her parents having an animated discussion. 
Dan pulled his phone out of his pocket and sent the video Aaron made of their encounter to Candy. He watched as her phone dinged with the text notification. She opened it and saw her scream. She sat down in the nearest chair and dropped her phone. Her mom picked it up and looked at what was on it. She tossed the phone in Candy's lap and walked away from her shaking her head. She saw Dan peeking around the corner and grabbed her husband. They walked towards Dan's area and looked to make sure Candy wasn't looking when they turned the corner. What a mess, Dan. We're so sorry, her dad said. I'm breaking off the wedding. I can't marry a woman that would cheat on me for one and betray her family like that for two. It's just insane, did she tell you why? Not yet. I haven't taken any of her calls she was saying it was all a lie, right up until you sent her the video figures. Lie, until your last breath, how is Candy? She's in x-ray right now. I'm going to get out of here while Candy's still sitting there. I'm going to grab some essentials and head to my parents' house, good idea. It's better to avoid her until you're calmed and settled Dan walked into the apartment and felt a wave of sadness sweep over him. He packed a bag while ignoring his phone ringing over and over. He saw a stack of invitations for the wedding and tore one to pieces. Those pieces were left on her, pillow. Candy was sitting in the waiting area wondering how the situation got so messed up. Why did Aaron record them? Why didn't he tell her? Why did he give it to Dan? Why was she so stupid in the first place? Then she saw a policewoman come around the corner. She walked over to her and asked, Officer, is it a crime to record me having an intimate moment without telling me? Well, I think it depends on what they do with the video. Revenge film laws prohibit uploading it to the web or sharing on social media. Also, there are laws against blackmail and things like that. What happened? A man I shared a moment with recorded it with his phone without my knowledge. He gave the phone to my fiancé to see it. Illinois hasn't passed the proposed law yet that would apply to that. You should contact an attorney, though, to see if you can have a civil action filed against him. I'm sorry. I hope it all works out, the officer said with sincerity as she walked away. Candy saw the doors open and her parents walk out with Shannon. She got up and walked over, but her father said, Haven't you done enough? Just leave her alone, but Daddy, please don't cause a scene, Candy. Just go home. Where's Dan he left an hour ago, what? Darn it, he must be at home, she said, and then ran out to her car to go home. As her parents turned onto Shannon Street, they saw the police car pass them with Aaron in it. Shannon shook her head, sadly, at the state of her life. They got a bag of her clothes packed and Shannon picked up the red cloth that caused the blow-up of her marriage and later her relationship with her sister. Mom, these are candies, can you please make sure she gets them? I want them out of my house, don't be crude. Just throw them away, Candy raced into her apartment and yelled out for Dan. She ran room to room, finding them all empty, ending up in her bedroom. She sat on her bed and cried. After several minutes, she laid her head on her pillow and found the torn-up invitation. She sobbed harder and called Dan again, he didn't answer. The next day, Dan realized he hadn't watched the video. Shannon confirmed it was Candy, but Dan had to see for himself. He decided to look for photos first to see if there were indications of it being more than one time. There were pictures of women, but they weren't candy. He found photos of Shannon, but he exited out not wanting to invade her privacy. He went back into the video and hit play. He saw Aaron say that he got a text from Shannon and put the phone down propped up on the nightstand. Dan realized that Candy probably didn't know she was recorded, and that was Aaron's excuse for handling the phone as they engaged in the act. It was standard interaction. Aaron was more muscular and would probably be considered better looking than Dan, but why would she risk it, he wondered. They hardly spoke. There were no snide comments putting down Dan or Shannon, and the moment was over in about 10 minutes. When done, Candy spoke, that's it. Are you happy now? Yes, you're an attractive person if Dan or Shannon find out. I will cut ties with you easy, honey. There's no need for that. I'm not going to ruin my marriage by revealing our secret. This stays between us. He better not find out about Mike either, I told you. I won't tell him. You held up your end of the bargain. I will hold up mine. You just need to be more careful if you're going to be unfaithful to him. Walking into a motel in broad daylight is a bad idea. I'm done anyway. That was a goodbye. I won't cheat when I'm married. You've got a different view of right and wrong, sweetie. No. Once I take my wedding vows, I'm committed. 
I took no vow when we started going out or when we got engaged. Wow, girl, if you don't think what you're doing is wrong, why engage in this secrecy he doesn't need to know? That's all that matters. Goodbye. Then the video stopped with Aaron smiling into the camera. Dan threw the phone at the wall and screamed, no his mom ran in and said, what honey? Everything okay, nope, just found out she's been involved with Mike too. Oh, Dan. I'm so sorry, yeah, me too, mom. Me too, Dan continued to ignore Candy's calls. He had to deal with Mike and didn't want him tipped off. Hopefully, Candy didn't watch the whole video and know that he knew. Dan texted Mike meet for a drink tonight, bro. I want to talk about the bachelor party. Mike? Yep, Bill's at 7. Dan, perfect. Bill's Pub is a strip mall bar with parking on the side of the building. It was a perfect location for someone to get robbed. Dan made call to his high school friend Javi and called due on a favor owed. In sophomore year of high school, Javi and Dan were together behind the school one day and saw Javi's girlfriend making out with another guy. Javi confronted him while his girlfriend ran off and called the cops. Dan told the police that the other guy threw the first punch after taunting Javi and calling him a coward and throwing other insults about taking his girlfriend. Javi ended up only getting a fine and a few hours of community service, which was less than the other guy who was deemed the instigator. Javi always credited Dan with keeping him out of juvenile hall and promised to repay the favor someday. That day had come. Dan was sitting in the parking lot and saw Mike pull up. As soon as Mike got out of his car, he was grabbed by one of the two masked men waiting. The second guy grabbed Mike's wallet and punched him in the stomach and face several times. Then for a final act of revenge, kicked him in the groin. When Mike curled up on the ground, Dan ran up yelling at them. The assailants ran off and Dan tended to Mike. Are you okay? What the heck was that all about? They took my wallet heck. Do you need an ambulance? No. Just call the cops. Dan called the police and they filed the necessary report for the robbery. Dan finally had enough of Candy calling him and answered the phone later that night. Hello, Dan, baby. It's not what you think. He cut her off and said, how long have you been involved with Mike, Dan? I'm not. That's insane. Watch the video. We're done. I'll get my stuff and you can keep the apartment. No. Dan, wait, she said to a dead connection. Candy watched the video in horror as she saw that their post-quiddle conversation was on there as well. She broke down crying again. Then she realized she had proof in his own words of him blackmailing her. Let's see what the cops think of that she said to the empty room. Dan went to the Delaney house to check on Shannon. Her mom let him in and hugged him. Apologizing for Candy's actions again and thanking him for helping Shannon once more. He walked up to Shannon's old bedroom where she was laying on the bed staring at the ceiling. He noticed the fresh cast on her arm and said, can I be the first to sign it? She jumped up and hugged him, sobbing into his chest. Why, Dan? How could she do this to us? I watched the whole video today. They talk about it. He blackmailed her. He blackmailed her. He caught her going into a motel with Mike. Mike? Oh my God, yeah, I just can't figure that one out. Have they been involved with each other since the beginning? Was that show at the mall where she slapped him silly and act? I just don't know what to think. Have you talked with her briefly? Long enough for her to lie to me and for me to tell her we're done, what are you going to do, Shannon? Now that I'm done with doctors for a while, I'm going to see a divorce lawyer. The cheating was enough on its own, but hearing that he blackmailed her into it is just too much, notwithstanding him pushing me down the stairs. I can't believe I blamed myself for that at first, that's okay. He'll get what's coming to him now. Did you hear that Mike was beaten and robbed outside of Bill's tonight? No. Shoot him, though, for messing around with Candy. Karma can be a pain, he smiled and agreed. What's next for you? Dan, obviously we're through. I feel bad for your folks because they paid some of the deposits for the wedding. We won't get those back. I guess I'll move back home and start over stay in touch, Dan. We can be there for each other. I know I'm sure going to need it. Of course. I'm sure I will need a shoulder to cry on as well. God. Such wasted time and wasted love. Thank goodness, we didn't get married yet. I'm sorry I ever told you to keep trying with her. That's okay. I was always settling anyway. My first choice was taken. Her eyes lit up and she smiled at that comment. He hugged her once more and went downstairs. Her parents were talking in the kitchen when he walked in. Mr. and Mrs. Delaney? I'm really sorry about the wedding. 
I'll pay you back for the deposits you made. So that's it then? Final decision? Yeah. Turns out she was involved with my best friend too. Her mom started crying as her dad said, Don't worry about the money. She'll pay us back. She was the one who messed up. Gary, her mom, snapped. Just being honest. If she had kept things right, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Take care. You're great people. I was very happy to be part of your family for the last few years. A tear fell down his cheek as he hugged them goodbye. You never know what the future holds. Dan will see, Mrs. Delaney. Take care. A week later, Dan went to his old apartment to get his stuff. He waited until Candy went to work, and he packed and loaded everything into the borrowed van. He closed the door and went up to take a final look around. He was saddened to think of what was lost. The love, the connection, the children they won't have. It hurt him so much. He left his key on the kitchen table and closed the door for good. As he drove back to his parents' house, Mike called him. They hadn't spoken since that night at Bill's. What he shouted into the speakerphone. Dan, listen, it was all a lie. I never had a romantic relationship with Candy, are you kidding me, or just dumb? She was forced because you were caught. She admitted it in the video, I'm sorry, man. I don't know what to say other than I'm so sorry. How long, what, how long were you two involved a little over two months? The first time was at Camden's party. You passed out and the rest of us played truth or dare truth or dare truth or dare. You're adults, not eighth graders. We were all intoxicated. Candy and I were the only single ones. When everyone left to be with their partners, we were so drunk we did it too idiot. Why did you continue it wasn't a regular thing? And she always reached out to me. You were my best friend. How could you do that to me? I always had feelings for her and you knew that. I finally had an opportunity and she was amazing. How could I turn it down? Listen to me very carefully. The next time I see you, you will regret ever being born. You are in major trouble and when I see you, not if I see you, when I see you, you won't recognize yourself. He didn't let him respond and ended the call. He scolded himself for being so intense. He knew he wasn't a fighter and he didn't win his last couple of fights. So it was an empty threat. He hoped it would be enough to keep him away. Candy was devastated by her family cutting her off from all contact. Eventually she transferred to an office in Milwaukee and hoped they would forgive her someday. She knew Dan never would. The betrayal cut too deep. Aaron was released on bail, but left Shannon alone. Partly due to the restraining order and partly because he wanted to be rid of her, as he called her. He ended up accepting plea deals for both the physical harm charge for pushing Shannon and the blackmail charge. His lawyer tried to get him off on the blackmail, but since it was his phone that recorded it and he willingly gave it to Dan, the judge allowed it to be used as evidence. He received six months for the physical harm and one year for the blackmail. His lawyer negotiated the best he could for the physical harm charge. Shannon's written statement suggested that she fell accidentally. However, the push that caused it was intentional, so he didn't get away without any consequence. He moved back to his hometown after his release for good behavior. Shannon never saw or heard from him again. Dan met with Shannon every Saturday for coffee and tea. It was strictly friendly, just two broken hearts seeking comfort in each other's presence. After six weeks, she canceled one Saturday morning. She called but left him a voicemail. She was crying in the message and said she didn't feel well. Dan didn't return her call. He drove to her house, where she was living again after Aaron moved out. The knock on the door startled her from her sadness on the couch. Used tissues were piled up, and she was wearing a ratty old robe. She looked through the window, saw it was Dan, and gasped. There was no way that she would let him see her like that. She shouted, Please go, I'm fine. He shook his head and mouthed. No, she broke down crying and said, Please, he shook his head again. She gave in and opened the door. He walked in, and when he saw the condition of the house, pulled her into a hug. What happened? I'm supposed to be your support. Remember I'm pregnant? Oh shoot. Yeah, oh shoot, come in. Let's sit down, I'm going to make you some tea. He went to the kitchen and grabbed her a pot of green tea. She had a Keurig that she used for tea. It was easier than boiling a teapot. He set the tea down for her and started picking up the tissues and putting them in the trash bin. Once settled, he sat next to her and pulled her into a hug and held her. 
She cried and sobbed in his arms for ten minutes in silence. Finally, she spoke, I'm almost three months along. With all of my stress, I never noticed I missed my period who's the father Dan joked and got lightly hit on the arm for it. He is, of course. I'm not unfaithful, of course not. What am I going to do, Dan? I'm so messed up. In a few months, I'll be divorced and my child will be born without a name. I've already decided that I will never let him know about the baby after what he did, and I'm scared. I don't want him in my life at all. The first thing you're going to do is take a shower. Once you've refreshed your body, I'm going to take you to the cafe we've been going to every week for the last month or so. This is not the end of the world for you. It's the start. You're having a baby. A beautiful little piece of you to shape into a future president or doctor. I'm so envious of you. I can't raise a baby alone, Shannon. You're a wonderful woman. There's someone out there waiting for you, I believe it, hey. Easy for you to say, she said as she got up to go shower. She did hear him say, had the wrong sister quietly to himself as she went upstairs. While she was showering, he tidied up her place a bit. He removed the mess from the living room and he loaded the dishwasher from the sink full of dishes. She came down to find him wiping down the counters. Why are you cleaning my house, huh? I'm not cleaning. I'm straightening up whatever. Let's go sitting in the cafe he ordered black coffee for himself and tea with non-fat milk for her. She smiled as he always remembered her order. What he said noticing her smiling face. It's cute how you remember my order we have been doing this for a while now I know. But if you didn't care you wouldn't pay attention to little things like that. Of course I care. How many punches to the face do I have to take before you realize that she looked away and wiped a tear? Sorry, she said. I'm just emotional. You're pregnant. I suppose I should get used to that being the new normal. Changing the subject from emotions, have you told your parents yet? No, that scares me too. You know you have to before you show right. I know. I don't think they will be mad. They want to be grandparents pretty badly. It's just that they've been under a lot of stress lately. Both of their daughter's marriages blowing up. Well, at least yours hadn't happened yet. Would you like me to go with you? Maybe I can deflect some of the emotions I can't ask you to do that. It's not your problem you didn't ask. I offered and it's no problem. Right now you're my best friend. I won't let you go through this alone, best friend, Eacham, she said with a raised eyebrow. He nodded and said, yeah. Don't forget it either, Shannon knocked on her parents' door nervously hoping no one answered. She frowned as her dad opened the door. He said, Hi guys, come on and hi daddy oh shoot, I'm only daddy, when it's bad Meg. Shannon and Dan are here. She called me daddy. What happened now Mrs? Delaney asked flippantly, half joking. Let's sit down okay okay pumpkin, what's up her dad asked, I'm pregnant what? Dan? God darn it couldn't you get married first. Her dad said. Dan was shocked and Shannon said. Daddy, I wish Dan's head spun around so fast his vision blurred. It's Aaron's. I've never hugged Dan, let alone be with him, she finished. Oh, sorry, Pumpkin. You guys are so close we kind of assumed you were dating. Her dad said sullenly. Uh, no, sir. We're just helping each other through our troubles as friends. I mean, she's still a married woman, goodness. Is that all that's holding you back? Dan, the papers are filed and it's all over, but the crying and Lord knows she's done plenty of that. Dan sat there with his jaw wide open. He couldn't find the words to respond, so her dad continued. Dan, she's in love with you. We can all see it. Heck, we thought you were already a couple, Dan, her mom continued. I can see the love in your eyes when you look at her, Dan, took Shannon's hand and said, You didn't want me when we were younger. I didn't think you felt that way. What Shannon said. I've loved you from afar for years. Yes, when we were in grade school and high school, it couldn't have worked but after I turned 18 and graduated, I thought I had a chance. Candy even tried to help, and when you stood me up to go with Steve to the carnival, I figured you didn't care for me in the same way. I was devastated. Later on, she told me that I never had a chance because you were older. You had hooked back up with your boyfriend at school. Oh, Dan. She told me a friend of Mike's needed a date. She didn't tell me it was you. I would probably have said yes, even though you were a couple years younger. You were cute, and I knew you were a good guy. Goodness, after you saved me from Steve, I was so embarrassed. I just ran back to school. That boyfriend was Aaron, by the way. 
He convinced me to give him another shot our lives seemed to be full of wasted time, Dan said, as he leaned in and hugged her. Well, that's settled, Ben, her dad said. Now about my pending grandchild. How far along are you almost three months we need to get your house ready? We need to set up a nursery and child-proof and shop. Oh boy, are we going to shop, her mom said joyously. Dan, if you guys are going where it seems you're headed, can you handle her having another man's child, her dad asked. Shannon gasped and said, Dad. No, it's a valid question. I obviously haven't had time to think about that, but I don't see how it would be a problem. Especially since you don't want Aaron and it's life that started the waterworks. Shannon cried tears of joy for the first time in months. I love you, Dan, he hugged her again and said, Dear heart, I love you more, her mom clapped and said, Let's start planning. A few weeks went by, and even though they saw each other a few times a week, and talked on the phone every day, Dan realized that they'd never gone on a real date. He immediately had flowers sent to her office, and on the card he had printed, Would you like to see a movie Friday at 3 o'clock? He got a text that said, I wondered if you would ever ask me out. He responded as foolishly as a man has ever responded to a woman before. I had to build up the courage to be seen in public with a woman who's expecting as soon as he hits send he realized his mistake. She couldn't see his face or get that it was a joke. He grabbed his coat and ran out of the office. She worked a few miles away, so he got there quickly. He rushed past reception and back to her cubicle. Her back was to him and she didn't see him approach. He startled her when he said, it was a joke she spun around and laughed at him. You drove over here to tell me it was a joke? I knew that, silly she saw the look of fear in his eyes and that they were red. Oh gosh, you really thought I would be upset she stood and hugged him. You silly, I knew you were joking. Sandy, what did I just do? Sandy in the cubicle next to her said, she suddenly burst into laughter and showed us the silliest text any of us have ever seen. You're either the biggest idiot in the world or the luckiest idiot Dan smiled and said, definitely the luckiest man in the world he hugged her and said, well, that's enough drama for one day. I'll let you get back to work now, so you can laugh at me in peace. Dan picked her up on Friday wearing his best suit. He had reservations at Ruth's Chris Steakhouse and a suit wasn't necessary, but it was their first official date. She opened the door and said, my oh my, do you clean up well? He didn't respond immediately because he was captivated by her beauty. She had on a loose-fitting dress, due to the baby bump, but it was short and her legs were encased in the most beautiful shade of mocha stockings he'd ever seen. Her blonde hair was cut short but framed her face perfectly. She had makeup on, but it was tasteful and looked as if she was going for the natural look. Her dress had a low-cut neckline, showing just enough cleavage to catch his attention. Lastly, he noticed she was wearing ankle-strap high heels. He could see the bright red nail polish on her mocha-painted toenails. Well, wow, she said. I can't tell which part of me has left you speechless. Can I take a guess with a smile, he said. Your baby bump, she put her hand to her mouth, shocked, but then figured he was only kidding and said, whatever, silly. You probably liked my feet, pervert. He looked deep into her eyes, put his finger under her chin, lifted her head and said, as beautiful as your feet are, I was absolutely not joking. Your pregnancy belly is stunning. I love you, she smiled, fought back her tears, and said, I love you more. After dinner, he drove her home and walked her to her door. She said, you know, if we get close to each other, you don't need to worry about it, he laughed and said, but I don't know where you've been. She punched him on the shoulder and said, Dan, will you please come inside and get close to me? He leaned down and hugged her. Coming up for air, he said, I would have been ecstatic to hear those words from you. But wait, she looked up at him and said, What's wrong first one to go makes breakfast? Sweetie, you're talking about an incentive to not go first. Yeah, won't it be fun, he said and pinched her. She squealed and ran into the house. He chased her up to her bedroom. She was self-conscious about her swollen belly, but Dan didn't mind. Dan took a deep breath. What's wrong, she asked. Nothing, babe. Just taking a breather before the grand finale, MMM. I like the sound of that he hugged her I love you. I love you too Dan woke up wrapped in the arms of his love. He believed she was his soulmate and had never felt more content in his life. She woke up shortly after and smiled upon seeing him watching her. She asked, what are you thinking my love honestly? Yes please. I was thinking about how in stories, 
the lover wakes up to the smell of coffee and bacon. All I smell is love and morning breath, she playfully hit him and said, okay, stinky breath. I'll get the coffee brewing and start the bacon. There's an extra toothbrush in the drawer on the left. Thank you, he said, and then hugged her. I love you, I love you too, stinky breath, when the time came. Dan started going to all of her doctor appointments in LeMay's classes. Everyone assumed he was the baby's father, and he never bothered to correct them, neither did Shannon. She was proud for people to think Dan was the father. Dan was pulling into his apartment's lot when he saw Shannon sitting on his stoop. What's up, honey, he said. She flung an envelope at him and said, my divorce is final. That's great, he said. What's wrong? I don't know. Nothing. Everything? I guess my failure as a wife is complete. How can you want me? I was clearly not enough for Aaron Dan recognized what was happening. She had been insecure about her small weight gain for a while. She also always worried that he would change his mind about her and would leave her for a non-pregnant girlfriend who would have his own child. Dan had been waiting for that day for months. He took her hand and led her to his apartment. He opened his door and pulled her in. Please sit. I'll be right back. He walked to his bedroom and made a call. Mr. Delaney, I'm sorry to do this over the phone, but your daughter got her final divorce papers today. She's a mess, sir. I'd like your permission to marry her. Goodness gracious, son. You had it the first time with Candy, and you most certainly have it now. Go make an honest woman out of her and come over and show her mother the ring. I'm sure you've already purchased it. Yes, sir. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Hey, can you come in here for a minute? Dan asked. You're making your pregnant partner walk all the way Dan was on one knee when she walked into the room. She froze in mid-sentence and started crying. Shannon, please make me the happiest person in the world and help me right our mistakes. Help me stop wasting love and time and give our baby a parent. Will you marry me, my love? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes, thank goodness, he said. She lightly tapped his shoulder. He hugged her with so much love and said, I've waited most of my life for you to say that to me. Wow, what a waste of time, she said as she hugged him.